Well, coronavirus is causing us to have to bring gravel in from two hours away to the job site here. So it'll be a good little run. Um, trailers got about eight tons of gravel in it. My gross combined weight is about 35,000 pounds. Uh, scale office is down. Uh, one of the fellows in there, I guess, is sick. Don't know whether or not he's sick with this coronavirus or not. Uh, but they've shut all operations down where people are having any kinds of interactions. So there's a guy at the uh, scale there in his pickup truck parking down the weights and billing us after the fact, I guess. But uh, yeah, it's turning into be turning into interesting times for sure. I got word from a friend of mine that I guess all garages um, that work on vehicles and stuff will be closed tomorrow at, after five uh, to any anybody in the public. I'll try that again. Uh, my video got interrupted by a phone call. But yeah, so all garages are gonna be closed down apparently uh, tomorrow after five to uh, anybody in the public. And also any garages that don't work on emergency vehicles will be shut down fully. And the ones that remain open will only be allowed to work on emergency vehicles so that will make things interesting i mean i don't know how that will affect me like if i can stay working um because i've got to you know bring my truck in for an oil change in the next little bit here and given the mileage that i'm putting on it you know in the last little bit here uh, that will fast be approaching so um definitely something i'm thinking about i might just try and sneak into the dealership and grab an oil filter and some uh, oil if I can get there in time but yeah I mean traffic's busy here but once you get out of town it's crazy how quiet it is um, people people are definitely you know not out and about as much but that's uh it's weird I don't even really know what to make of it I just hope it doesn't affect you know us too much financially because right now things are looking pretty grim. I'll just let the gas station fuel up, ready for the trip up to the job site. Uh, there's a bit of a steep hill here. This uh, definitely slows trucks down. Um, usually, you know, fully loaded B train will crawl down to 40 kilometers, sometimes 50 kilometers an hour up this hill. So definitely will work this truck. I mean. I'm not maxed out as far as what the truck can legally tow, but getting up there, 35,000 pound gross combined load, it's not a bad load, but I mean, I don't know, half throttle a little, maybe over half throttle, and I'm holding quite, quite nicely. I get up to speed. the hills never really uh, show very well in the video. I think this is probably six or seven percent. It's not, not much, but definitely you know when you're going up it. A lot of the older cars that trucks have had in the past that didn't have much power like Toyotas and little Volkswagens and stuff like that. I mean, on a five speed they would be fourth gear up this hill so definitely slow you down even empty you don't have lots of power anyways I mean I'm slowing down here uh, I don't have full throttle probably three quarter it's not bad just about 100 kilometers an hour crusting the hill did not feel like I was pushing the truck hard at all but yeah so far I've liked uh, everything about this truck got approaching 16,000 kilometers just over 9,000 miles or whatever that is no issues whatsoever I think I am on the third refill of the def fluid tank so that means I burned three tanks because it was full when I got it so I mean it uses a bit of it but it's not too bad you buy it in the four gallon bottles there it's fairly expensive 
they were on sale for 16 bucks for four what, US gallons, so 3.78 liters. Card lock prices are a lot cheaper. They're I think just under 80 cents a liter. So yeah, not too bad. I'm not sure what that works out to as far as how many miles per gallon of the def fluid, but probably a couple hundred anyways, 140, 150 I would guess. I'll check back in a little bit here. Well, a few kilometers into the trip, and you know, the truck just, <laughs> it just drives beautifully. I mean, even with that load behind it, I mean, it's really relaxing, quite comfortable. A little rest stop up here, I'll pull in and uh, give you a quick look at the trailer and what we're hauling here. But yeah, the truck uh, really does a fantastic job. It makes, you know, short work and quick and effortless work of pretty much anything I've asked of it so far and I mean most of those kilometers have been towing miles too so it's a impressive truck to say the least so here we'll hop out take a look on the wide angle so we got a low trail tri-axle dump trailer we have a full load of 13 mil clear fracture rock I don't know if you can see through there a little off to the side but definitely definitely a hefty load it's a darn good trailer too We got our control area in here, remote. We've got a upgraded battery in it. Uh, we've got a lift gate charger, so the battery will charge at tw up to 20 amps uh, while the truck is driving down the road, so I never have to charge the battery. I mean, you can plug it in and charge it off of that. I think that's eight amps. It doesn't really, it doesn't really work all that well, to be honest. So, well, my phone keeps ringing and interrupting my uh, my videos. Well, my company sticker on there, dirty truck. All right, well, we're back on the road. Quick little pit stop. Get rid of my coffee as well. I mean, as you can see, we're definitely pulling, you know, a good sized load. I mean, it's no joke truck just handles it effortlessly good acceleration even loaded I'm not flooring it a little over half throttle maybe getting up to speed without any drama truck uh, fuel mileage wise isn't too bad Let's see where we're at here I just reset my trip meter right now that's what our trip is oh no that's not the trip that's the other one so we're 27.6 liters per 100 K I've gone 75 kilometers since fueling up or no since I reset it at the gravel pit sorry so we're we still have a ways to go yet um, overall I've been going back and forth on this route and doing some hauling locally but I've been towing the trailer around the entire time. I've averaged 12.3 uh, miles to the gallon. It's like imperial miles to the gallon. So uh, not great, but you know, not, not too bad. It's a heck of a lot better than a dump truck. But yeah, well, leave it at that for now. And follow up with you in a little bit in the next little video clip here. So anyways, I can't remember uh, what I was thinking about talking about, but I'll just go back to you know what's all over the news, this whole coronavirus thing. It's already having an impact um, you know, on guys like me that are contractors and stuff, um, bigger job sites and whatnot that have lots of people on them are at risk of being shut down. 
hauling gravel in now from a couple hours away because the gravel pit is closed, uh, more or less, except for, you know, to guys that have accounts and whatnot like that. Um, one of the guys in the scale office there is sick. No idea whether he's sick with it, but he's home and nobody can go into the scale office. And yeah, that combined with some of the other stuff that sounds like it's gonna be happening with, you know, the garages and mechanics, you know, having to shut down. Uh, who knows how long guys like me will even be able to stay working for right now in this climate that uh, fear and uh, worry and everything else. You know, there's a whole lot more to think about, you know, than just whether or not you're gonna be able to pay your bills there's other factors depending on where you live like we we uh you know where where i'm at it's not not a busy place there's not a lot of people but in the last couple of years the the city and you know the local sort of politicians or whatever you want to call them uh, have rolled out the red carpet for druggies and crackheads and you know those kinds of people to, to come into town and they've caused you know real problems for us here I mean they've built homeless camps and uh, basically you know taken over the downtown city core um, where I'm from um, the, the city ended up building you know low-income housing uh, local like right nearby where the homeless camp was they eventually disbanded it because the cruise ships stopped coming in but I mean, the crime rates and stuff have gone through the roof um, the last couple of years. And these people are already, you can see them on the street getting really antsy. So uh, my, my thought and concern, or thoughts and concerns are, you know, what happens if the pharmacy shut down and they can't get to their methadone or their illegal drug dealers get cut off from their supply routes? I think things are going to go to hell in a handbag uh, a lot quicker than anybody wants to think about. So, you know, um, your security um, right now probably is at risk. And a lot of people aren't thinking about that. And, you know, government's talking about all sorts of uh, you know, uh, incentives to try and make sure that the economy doesn't collapse and by, you know, giving individuals money whether it's in the form of GST credits or child tax credits or you know whatever it's really it's a drop in the hat it's not going to do much I mean, you know, bumpy roads there over the bridge and the expansion joints but yeah uh, it's definitely a concern I mean we're what do they say five days away you know with no food before people really start turning nasty and becoming uncivilized where we are located, you know, um, in British Columbia here, south coast, I'm on Vancouver Island, all our fuel comes from Washington State, the refineries down there. So with what's going on down in Washington, I mean, how long will it be before, you know, those barges stop coming up uh, to BC and cut off our fuel supply? Everything north of Prince George, uh, for them, fortunately, come from refineries in Alberta. Um, but from what I'm aware of, everything south of Prince George comes from Washington State. So that's a huge area. I mean, that's the you know the bulk of the population of British Columbia that gets their fuel from you know Washington State. I, I mean, I can't be 100% certain that you know places a little further north than Vancouver don't get some of their fuel from. Alberta, but I know for a fact that everything that uh, comes into Vancouver or Vancouver Island, that, that all comes from Washington. So it's definitely something to think about. Um, garages shutting down, stores shutting down. This isn't going to go away overnight. And that's the thing. People are thinking that by taking these extreme measures that we're going to be able to somehow contain this well I mean you look around the world nobody's been able to contain this you know Italy now today has had their death rate climb higher than China if you want to believe the numbers coming out of China but, I mean how accurate is
is that information that's come out of China as far as the data um, related to this virus and how many people got sick and how many people died. I don't know. It's uh, definitely dangerous times that we live in. And the other thing too is, I mean, if for instance, all of a sudden in a month's time, this just disappears, you know, what, what does that mean? How is that going to factor into life moving forward? Are they just going to turn around and say, oh, well, you know, everybody getting locked up in their house now um, has saved the world. And every time from that, well, from this point on, I mean, every time there's some sort of a pandemic, which we have every year, um, are we going to end up getting into a situation where we're basically under medical martial law? some tokens already there I mean and then here's another thing that I've been kind of thinking about because <laughs> we're getting you know to the point where things are going to start warming up and things are going to get drier forest fires I mean I don't know when the last time BC uh, issued a provincial state of emergency but uh, you know when it comes to something medical like a pandemic but they do it fairly regularly when it comes to forest fires so if we're at the peak of things and we're say 50 days behind you know Italy we're going to be right in the middle of peak forest fire season or just about going into it so that's a scary thought because I mean you look everywhere here there's trees and we don't have a lot of snow in the mountains I mean you can see it up there but if we don't have a decent snowpack going into June we don't have enough water right so things are dry and um, the last several years we have seen forest fires and it's not a pleasant thought I lived up in northern BC in a place called Tumblr Ridge back in 2006 we had major forest fires there and that was an eye-opening experience you know you're just getting evacuated I was living in my truck and camper down on the river and driving truck hauling coal from the mines and I was gonna go to work and I told my boss I was like no I'm not going tonight I'm getting my truck and camper well, my camper loaded back on the truck because you know it looks like we're going to be told to leave town here like with no notice and that was about 3 30 in the afternoon and by 7 30 at night we had our evacuation notice and had to get the heck out of there so i mean if we're dealing with you know a major pandemic and then we have a natural disaster like that happen you know that's that's bad news i mean not to mention i mean the fact that we live in one of the most active earthquake areas in the world. Um, you know, we're right along the Cascadia subduction and we are overdue when it comes to having a major, you know, mega thrust earthquake. The last one that happened was in the year 1700, so that's 320 years ago. And they know, based on uh, record keeping in Japan, um, from when the tsunami that was created when we had the earthquake here reached over there that it happened I can't remember what day but in January and they can actually work back and know exactly the time right so 320 years since we've had one of those earthquakes and uh, 250 years is kind of the average I mean 300 to 500 I mean we're, we're right in the you know ticking time uh, bomb zone as far as that happening so it can happen any day and we've had a lot of earthquake activity around the world and especially around the Pacific Rim. So who knows? I mean, we got everything going wrong in 2020. So the way things are going, I would not be surprised to see something crazy like that happen. I mean, it's just one thing after another. So I don't want to be a pessimist, but I don't think we're out of the woods yet. And I don't think staying locked up at home and you know, self-quarantining is going to be you know, the solution to all all the problems that we're facing. I mean, obviously we need to do that based on what they're they're seeing and the data that they're getting out of places like China and Italy, but we're definitely in for a rough, rough ride. And I don't really know <laughs> where we're gonna be in two weeks, but at this rate, it's every Friday, something new and extreme, you know, gets rolled out as far as public policy and you know how we have to adapt and change our life fight the spread of this virus so yeah it's <laughs> I mean it is stressful I mean I got kids a lot of people I know have kids and, you know a lot of 
us have food in the house, but there's certain things that we we just don't have enough. I mean, I don't have enough milk and you know perishable things in my house to keep my youngest kids happy. Um, you know, they're not going to want to live off rice and lentils and you know non-perishable things. You know, figure out how to deal with that. I mean, diapers and stuff. I mean, they're something we're so used to having you know disposable diapers that most of us you know probably don't really know how to go back to using cloth diapers but yeah, there's so many things and we just have to kind of keep moving forward and hope for the best you know, don't hide in fear because fear is not going to do anything for you you just have to be sensible i guess but anyways enough of that rant <laughs> um getting closer to my destination here we're 100 9.4 kilometers on the trip since I left the gravel pit and we're at 26.9 liters per 100k once I get to the location I will switch it over and take a look at what that is and miles per gallon and stuff but at least the weather's nice <laughs> can't complain about that highways have been pretty quiet I mean there's some traffic today um, but even then it's I bet you there's probably 30% less traffic right now. The drive home last night, there was a fraction of what what you'd normally see. I mean, this is more like what things were uh, like on the highway about five years ago. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, that part of it's nice. And fuel is cheap, holy smokes. Diesel's dropped to 95.8 cents a liter. I mean, I haven't seen fuel prices that cheap since I bought my other truck in 2007. So that's a long time ago now. Um, places like Calgary, I was hearing that gasoline is down to 60 cents a liter. I mean, that's that's approaching, you know, prices of fuel back when I was first driving as a teenager. Which is, <laughs> I mean, I, I never never would have thought I saw would see prices of fuel drop that much. Anyways, I'm going to end the video here for now just because we're going to be pulling off the highway and I definitely need to be having my cameraman here focus on where I'm going. At the destination, i got to go down the road a little ways and turn around. But at least the weather is perfect. You wouldn't know that all this terrible stuff's going on in the world, judging by the weather. shots of the lake and we definitely live in one beautiful place and lucky people that live here right on the lake definitely a little jealous I wish I had a bought a place here years ago when things were really cheap Well, they might get cheap again, you never know. Well, I'm gonna end the video for now and come back in a bit. Well, that's where we're at for our mileage on that trip. 75 miles, 8.6 average miles to the gallon. I'm gonna hop out here. I got my guy setting up safety cones. We're not going to go too far down that hill if this is what we're doing with the gravel. This is the core gravel 6040 HDR. Building a steep driveway down to the lake. May as well get that tarp rolled back and I guess I'll trip that gate and go get the machine. We definitely have a bit of material to haul in here. Then we'll have to do the edges and get everything. But definitely can't argue with the view from the office. These are all pinned and secured. 
great big 12 inch spikes. Well, I forgot to make a video of when I fueled up and I'm at 10.5 miles to the gallon. Um, pretty much that's pulling, you know, 30, 35,000 pounds gross combined. So not bad, not bad at all. The hand calculated was a little bit better. Uh, I'll put that in the video here and in the uh, information section of the video. But I think, uh, you know, overall it's, you know, pretty respectable. Truck, you know, doing 110 to 120 on the highway, so 70 mile an hour uh, back and forth on the highway there. And that's 483 miles that I've driven. I'll go back into the settings here and change it over to liters per 100K. So not too bad, 22.3 liters per 100K, 778.7 kilometers. Uh, fair bit of driving there. Uh, what do we got here? Towing information. There's engine hours, 465, 132 idle hours don't think it will tell me my trailer tow information trailer towing information no active trailer no but when I hook it up next I'll make a note of it but I can tell you right now probably better part of 50% of all the miles put on the truck so far have been towing so it's uh, definitely been working, doing what it's supposed to do.